You heard about it. Nisa Nisa, the original Lightbringer. Azura High, the third head of Dragon. What are they? Who are they? I mean, have we seen them? You know what? Yes, we have. We've seen them all. But where? Before I explain that, let me do a short review on my last video because I need a few pieces of information from there and I have to show you how George came up with the word Azura High. Don't forget, George is someone who came up with Hodor from Hold the Door and I showed you how Belanca turned out to be your own great joy from your own Ash Joy. So I hope you're open-minded about this and I promise you today's video will be more about prophecies and quotes from the books and the show unlike my last video which was heavy on Native American symbolism and necessary in order to explain everything that will be discussed in this video. And along the way, I'll show you who I think the Night King might be. I think I have a pretty good idea who he is. I'll need a few things from my previous video though, so let's get started! Okay, so in my last video, I told you that this symbol is winter water sign. I only emphasized the winter part because you haven't watched this video yet, but I want to emphasize that it has water in it too. Sansa has it, John has it, and we saw White Walkers have it. I also mentioned that this was the other saying, winter is coming, but I'll let you know what the true meaning of the symbol is toward to the end of this video. So bear with me, it takes a lot to explain it. And this symbol is Azura High, the return of the heroes of the past, and I also told you that the wolf embodied both protection and destruction and was the symbol of evil as well as good. This makes this guy a Stark, the destructive and evil side of the wolf. And I said these three are Jamie, John, and Bran in order. I know some might disagree with me, but let's see if these three people, Bran, John, Jamie, fit into the original legend of Lightbringer and the Nisa Nisa thing. You know what I'm talking about? One of the legends about the original Lightbringer required the killing of Azurai's wife, Nisa Nisa, in the process of forging the Lightbringer. And many people think that it takes a female sacrifice to make the Lightbringer, and the human sacrifice is the most important and the only ingredient in making the Lightbringer. And I totally disagree. Let's talk about tempering the Lightbringer in water first. This is the winter water. San says it, John has it, it seems like all Starks have it, so why not Bran? Bran is a Stark, so Bran has it. Bran has the water part, but I also mentioned that in my last video. Bran is the raven and the raven is the bringer of light in Native American myth. Yes, but in an interview, George mentioned that we should not trust the raven because they are tricky. I think George said that because he knew there would be someone like me who would find out where he got the idea for A Song of Ice and Fire and that the raven was a bringer of light in Native American myth. But it's alright George, that didn't trick me. I know the raven is a trickster as well. And Bran is just one of us or high, but not the Lightbringer. I know the Lightbringer is actually a sword in your novel. And I also figured out Bran has the winter water symbol because he's after all a Stark. So don't worry about it George, I'm not gonna say Bran is the Lightbringer. Though, I accidentally said it in my last video. Sorry guys, that was my mistake. Let me clarify on that just one last time. Bran is one of Azor Ahai and the Lightbringer is a sword. And a sword like the Lightbringer has a great power and the great power requires a great sacrifice. Bran becomes crippled when all he likes is climbing. And Jaime is basically a lion, he's a Lannister, but Jaime loses his sword hand. And the third part, Nisa Nisa. Many people think that this hasn't happened yet and some fans believe that Danny will be Nisa Nisa. They say John might forge a new sword with dragon glass he collected from Dragonstone from season 7 and probably temper it by killing Danny, making her Nissa Nissa in season 8. But no, as far as I know, the Nissa Nissa sacrifice has already been made. When? Think about it. Nissa Nissa is a human sacrifice. She is someone who actually lost her life for the completion of Lightbringer. Bran has lost his ability to walk. Jamie lost his hand. But Nissa Nissa lost her life. Nissa Nissa is sacrifice. And who else has lost his or her life in Game of Thrones? Jon Snow. Or Aegon Targaryen. Like Nissa Nissa, Jon is sacrifice. Aegon is sacrifice. And you're looking at Nissa Nissa right now, right in front of your eyes. This is how George came with Nissa Nissa. But why was Nissa Nissa a wife instead of a husband? John is a man. He cannot be a wife. He's a husband. Does it make the original Azurahai a woman? Does it mean that Danny is Azurahai, like tokens the Lord of the Rings? Is there some kind of parallel universe George has created? Or is it because all prophecy is a high Valerian and thus gender neutral like Valonqar? 
you know, many fans think Arya could be Valonqar because it's High Valerian and thus it means a younger sibling. It doesn't have to be a younger brother. So Arya can be Valonqar, right? So in High Valerian, wife is husband and vice versa. It is possible. But no, it has to do with the name. You see, George is very particular about naming his characters. I couldn't find the video that I watched a few years ago. I saw it on YouTube. It was George and another female writer being interviewed on stage. I forgot her name. And during the interview, George asked the other writer how she came up with the names for her characters. And when her answer was plain enough, George didn't look that impressed. George didn't say anything, but I could tell he was saying, I cannot write if I don't have the names for my characters. He had that kind of look on his face. If you know which video I'm talking about, please comment below because I can't find that one. The point is, a name is really important for George. So much so, even most Valerian swords have their names in Song of Ice and Fire. When the original Lightbringer was forged, it was given a masculine name. But when it was reforged, it was given a feminine name. So the Lightbringer is a female now. And unlike what many fans believe, Lightbringer has to be reforged, not newly made, like one of those prophecies. And out of all the known Valerian steels in Song of Ice and Fire, and there are only three swords with woman in their names, Dark Sister, Lady Farlon, and Widow's Veil. Vale. And out of these three Valerian blades, only one of them is a reforged one, Widow's Veil. Vale. Widow's Veil vale was reforged from ice, the Stark's ancestral sword. This makes ice the original Lightbringer. Yep, the original Lightbringer is ice, or was ice. I have another proof I'll show you in a bit. But for now, let me just go back to Widow's Veil. Vale. So Widow's Veil vale was reforged from ice, and where is Widow's Veil vale now? Jamie has it. But wait a minute. The prophecy says Lightbringer was completed by killing Nissa Nissa. John is a Nissa Nissa. Does that mean John will be wielding Widow's Veil? Vale? No. The prophecy is in part about telling in what order the events will take place, giving us the timeline of the events. It talks about how many days and nights it took for Azura High to complete the Lightbringer, and this is the only Azura High prophecy with time in it. That's to say, chronologically, that's the order of events we'll see in the books or the show. First, Bran has to become crippled, then Jamie has to lose his hand, and then John has to die. But with Widow's Veil vale made way before John's death, Widow's Veil vale was made even before Jamie lost his hand. This prophecy means the Lightbringer's power will only take effect after these three events happen, and the Lightbringer will finally find its wielder. And that's the price that Westeros has to pay for the great power of the Lightbringer. John being Nisa Nisa has nothing to do with the who the wielder of the Lightbringer will be. To George, I think the Lightbringer is a living, breathing entity. It has life in it. We don't see it. For us, the Lightbringer is just a sword, but made of special kind of material, obsidian. But I think George gave life to this weapon, and it is a being, and, and it'll choose its own wielder. You see what I mean in a bit. And the fact that the first two attempts in forging the Lightbringer failed does not necessarily mean the third way is the only way. It needed the first two to make the third one work. Brand, Jamie, and John, individually, none of these three people will stand against the army of the undead alone. But together, they can defeat the darkness or the others. Azurahai needs all three ingredients. Water, Lion, and Nissa Nissa. And Azurahai needs a sword or the Lightbringer, and that sword is Widow's Whale. Well. And that water, Lion, and Nissa Nissa is our Azurahai. Now I need to show you how George came up with the word Azurahai. Azurahai is not a random mishmash of alphabets. So knowing that George is really picky about naming his characters, I had to give it a thought on what he really meant by Azurahai. And I sort of knew it before, but then I wasn't sure about it until I saw the cave art in Season 7. It cleared out everything for me. And also the fact that John's Tegir name is now officially Aegon. And that was the last piece of puzzle that I needed. Here's how George came up with Azura High. It's kind of like an um, alphabet soup, but I think George actually made it that way for us to figure it out eventually. So what is Azura High? It's like George's holy trinity, except these are humans. Azura High is three heroes in one. And our three heroes are Jamie, John, a.k.a. Aegon, and Bran. Let's put down all their names here. Bran, John, Aegon, and Jamie in this order. You'll see why in a bit. Now, what George did was, he took three consonants from the word heroes, H, 
R, Z instead of S from its pronunciation and put them backward like this, Z, R, H. Why? Um, maybe it's his way of saying the first will be last and the last first, you know, like the Bible verse. And I think he really meant it that way. You'll see why in a bit. And then he took vowels from each name, A from Bren, O from John, A from Egan, and A, I from Jamie. Why two vowels from Jamie instead of one? That's because Jamie has that I. That I belongs to Jamie. So who's that tiny I? It's I from Ice or I from Widow's Well. George made it clear that Jamie is the wielder of the light bringer there. Jamie and Widow's Well are one. I guess sword and swordsman are like holy matrimony. They're two in one. It has to come with Jamie because these two belong together. And there's more meaning to that. We'll find out soon. Um, now George took the vowels and then sandwiched those consonants with them and voila, you get a zrahai. And why two words? It's going to be controversial, but um, I'm just going to say it. Okay, one and a half from Starks and one and a half from Targaryens. Yep, Jamie says they are the best stars of the Mad King. That's why they're incestuous and that's why Jamie doesn't think like Tyrion does. He doesn't have the skills to succeed in diplomacy as Taiwan and Tyrion do, and that's why Cersei has keen interest for wildfire. Jaime and Cersei's son Joffrey was petulant, arrogant, and prone to fits of executions like the Mad King, and that's why Tyrion referred to Joffrey as Aerys III. You need more proof, right? Let's look at Azrahi prophecy here. So the prophecy says, Champion will be reborn to wake the dragons from stone. And many people think the dragons from stone is about Daenerys because Daenerys was born on Dragonstone, so I see why. But the prophecy talks about not a dragon, but dragons in plural. And Danny is singular, and her dragons were not born on Dragonstone. And I'm really surprised why people don't see rock as stone. This part of Azurai prophecy is about the sacred Targaryens who are from Casterly Rock. Yes, Rocky Stone and Jamie and Cersei are Targaryen bastards. And thus we saw this part of prophecy not in the books, but in the show already. In the part where Jon tried to convince Jamie and Cersei at Dragon Pit by showing them the white he captured in Season 7, he tried to wake the dragons to warn them the others are coming. But, as far as we know, Cersei's not interested in it, and it seems Jamie will soon join Jon in North. But you're still not convinced that Jamie is Targaryen, right? Okay, revealing Jamie's Targaryen identity as the big plot twist at the end. How? Yada yada yada, and like this. I don't know how to put this, but I'll give it a try. Jamie will walk through the fill of fire made by dragons and draw his burning widow's well because his. Fireproof, just like Danny. His golden hand will melt like the golden crown of Viserys, and his clothes might burn, but Jamie won't burn. Instead, he'll get his sword hand back because of the melted golden hand. It's like soldering the Valyrian steel directly to his arm with gold. They have the right kind of fire too, dragon's fire. And this is what I meant by Jamie and Widow's Will I won. Widow's Will will become part of Jamie. That's why the tiny I was right next to Jamie's A. I is becoming part of Jamie. Jamie will be in the middle of fire and start screaming, but then the fire cannot kill him because Jamie is fireproof. And that's when we know that he's actually a Targaryen, the third head of dragon. Do you get it? But why am I so sure that Ice is or was the original Lightbringer? Because of these symbols. There are only two symbols made by White Walkers, the Winter Water and Azura High. In my last video, I told you this Winter Water symbol is the other saying, Winter is coming. I had to put it that way because it takes this whole video to explain what it really means. That's how much work George put into this. It's really intricate. It took me a while to piece it all together. Um, anyway, I told you this is the Winter Water symbol and there's more meaning to it. Let me ask you this. What is Winter Water? Or should I say, um, what does water become during the winter? It becomes ice. If you take a close look, these symbols are made of dead bodies of humans and horses. This is how the others say, 
Aish, the original Lightbringer, and Ozohai, whoever they were, we're coming back to end you both. We're defeated by you, Aish and Ozohai, once, but we're not losing this time. We're here to avenge. Aish is the original Lightbringer. Starks kept it, and that's why Starks have this symbol with them. And I told you the symbol is modified a bit to make it more fitting to the story. Now look closely. The winter water symbol looks a bit more like a sword going through a circle, right? That's because that winter water, or ice, is a sword, not a frozen state of water. And the others are coming back to destroy ice and kill us or high. They're coming back to avenge, but they have no clue that Ice is now Widow's Well and Azurahai are three different people. And thus, Ice has Ness Stark's blood on. Ice was used to behead Ness Stark before he was reforced into Oathkeeper and Widow's Well. And when Widow's Well was given to Joffrey, he said every time he uses it, it'll be like cutting off Ness Stark's head all over again. Widow's Will is the only sword that can cut the head of Nestarks over and over and over again. It is the only sword that can kill a Stark. It can kill a Stark and thus it can kill the Night King. If this sword can cut the Night King's head, it'll be like cutting Nestarks head all over again. The Night King is Ned Stark. Or Eddard Stark. Like there have been so many friends in Stark family. There must have been one more Ned or Eddard. And that Ned is the one that the children of the forest turned into the Night King. And this is the evil versus good in the wolf I was talking about in my last video. Ned Stark's good side is the Ned we saw in season 1. And the evil side of Ned is the Night King. This is the Stark. Contrast in the wolf, the good versus evil, the protection versus destruction, the opposite end of the spectrum. Ned Stark is the Night King. In order to kill the evil Ned, the good Ned had to die because they coexist, the good and the evil. If there's no more good Ned, there'll be no more evil Ned. And that's why Ned had to die. And Jamie always wanted to challenge Ned. If Jamie fights with the Night King, it'll be challenging Ned all over again and that's what this prophecy meant challenging the others with the night king jamie will challenge ned again but this time it'll be the evil version of ned and this is the song of ice and fire starks their weapon their ancestral sword ice the original light bringer be forged into widow's well with the help of fire from targaryen's weapon the fire breathing dragon will create a burning sword of hero widow's well the reforged light bringer and it'll be wielded by the third head of dragon that regard told danny about and his name is jamie targaryen and like Lyanna chose Rhaegar Targaryen, Ice chose Tark over a Stark. And Jaime will defeat the Night King. Jaime is the chosen one. Ice chose him. But at the end, Ice will cry. She'll cry like she never before. Ice didn't cry when she lost Nestar. Ice didn't cry when Joffrey and Tommen died. But Ice will wail when Jaime falls. Because Jaime is part of her. She's waited over 8,000 years to be one with the men she chose and the day when she finally becomes one with him is the day she loses him. She'll wail longer than the long claw and louder than dragons. She's now Jamie's widow and her wail will be something Mistress has never heard of. It'll last a long while. And the long wail of the burning sword ice is the song of ice and fire. I think that's what George meant by song of ice and fire. And I truly believe that. <laughs> Season 8 leak is something that HBO distributed because they had this big leak for Season 7 and that was quite detrimental for their show last year. George put everything in the book, in the prophecies, and in the words. It was all in the show. The big plot twist at the end is not Bran being the Night King. But it is Jaime finally finds his true identity and becomes the real hero of Vestros. So that's sweet, but it'll be also bitter because the hero will not sit on the Iron Throne at the end because he will not survive. Um, ramping the Night King and getting killed by John sounds way too marvel to me. I don't think that's Martin's. And also, I, I'm really grateful that George found that beauty in Native American myths and legends because 
I'm really growing on them as I do more research. I think they deserve a lot more attention and appreciation than now. It is truly amazing and seriously fascinating. I would say they're as good as other mythologists like Norse and Greek. And they met George and George found them. And it's like fireworks. It's almost like Widow's Whale meeting Jamie. How George utilized all those things in his Song of Ice and Fire is absolutely Stunning, and I really wish I were more fit or could do a better job in delivering all the messages. Sorry, George, I'm not really good at making these videos, but I think I think you're a genius. Thank you, George, for your awesome work. I really appreciate it. Hats off to you. And for you guys, and I found out where George got the ideas for placing a feather on Lyanna's statue, like we saw in the pilot episode of Game of Thrones. Um, I'll talk about that, the true inspiration for Lyanna and Brega's tragic love story, in my next video. But before I go, I'll be honest with you. There's this one thing that I haven't figured out yet. <laughs> the salt and smoke part in the prophecy. <laughs> Maybe Melisandre was right. Dragonstone is the place of salt and smoke. And if so, then we've already seen it. Uh, Dragonstone is where John realized that he needs to seek alliance with others like Cersei and Jaime in Season 7. But I think it has to do with John's resurrection somehow. I don't know. Maybe the show didn't include that or it'll be something that we'll see in the book or maybe i totally missed i don't know what do you guys think what do you guys think the salt and smoke is about please let me know in the comments because i cannot figure it out all by myself i hope you guys enjoyed this one and thank you so so much for watching have a make a fantastic one see you guys later bye